to say the Trinidad and Tobago Premier Football League transfer window was busy would be a gross understatement. But did the hyperactivity impact negatively on the nation's top ranked team, according to CONCACAF? All this and more tonight on First Team. Welcome to First Team, I'm Wayne Cunningham, along with a game caller, the highly sought after Giovanni Novello. And in the expert seat is the professional's professional, national senior men's head coach, Angus Eve. Gus, just before we get into the highlights, we must talk about the action during the, the transfer window. It was, it was hectic. It, uh, it made me feel like real international football comes to China and Tobago. Uh, and, because and, these <laughs> were going left, right and centre. I definitely think it's um, uh, good to be here again with you guys. You didn't call me for a little while. Ah, I didn't get one of the team. But I'm back on the starting <laughs> team <laughs> now. You know, the full team again. <laughs> but um, most definitely, I think um, this was one of the most interesting and busiest uh, mid transfer windows that we probably ever had mm. because the stakes are so high and each team wanted to top up on the, the, the areas that they were lacking in and, and I think uh, a lot of teams did a lot of good work in the window. What okay. was your um, what was your pick of the transfer market though? I know some people always have you know, I, I think um, the, the standout pick for me, it, it definitely is one out of two. Uh, but I think Real Gill, coming from where he came from mm. to join another team in Trinidad, that was really big for everybody. And of course, Joven Jones coming back uh, from the MLS and playing his trade in Trinidad, that, that was massive. All, All right. right. Let me touch on the local part first. Real Gill, moving from two minutes now to the Rangers, the club Sando. That to me is the biggest move, you know, <laughs> of, of of the uh, of the transfer window. Right? Tell me, tell me the significance of that, really. Um, it's a power shift. Uh, I think um, in the pandemic and before, Rangers was the only game in town. You know, credit to uh, Mr. Ferguson, the people up there. They've been paying the players in a pandemic and really um, trying to do good things with the players up there. But now you have other teams that can compete with him financially and are more probably a little bit more attractive to the players that they could, you know, because this club Sando team, if you look at them, is a very young team. Yeah. Uh, they bought several players from, from, uh, from Civic also. Uh, two national and 20 players in Thompson, Isaiah, and, and Luke Phillip, who is a, is a tremendous young talent. Easy Kelke is on a 23 player, fantastic player. He played at Naparima for years and done really well, you know. So, and then Ronaldo Francois, another player who is, who is uh, you know, for me, Club Sando, uh, they think that they needed players going forward because defensively they're really solid, goalkeeping wise, um, they're looking good, and they, they, they are the right pieces, I think. I didn't really expect that, right? Angus Eve approving of something that Club Sando do. Yeah, that's <laughs> kind of strange, that, that right? came out of left field somewhere. <laughs> real, <Yeah>. real. <laughs> but, but coming back to, to those, to Club Sando, do you think this is not just about TTPFL, but they're looking forward to the CONCACAF? Definitely. This, this, these moves are definitely CONCACAF moves. And uh, <laughs> as, all, as again, all national under 20 players. And what you're seeing with it is that, you know, the opportunity for the players to be seen on, a, on, a, on, a, on that stage and um, the, the potential for business to be done um, by way of, of, of getting players into, you know, into, into different leagues. Because they're now looking for players that are under 20. They're now looking for players who are over 20. So Club Sando has made some tremendous moves for now and into the future. So let's just take a little break from all the transfer speculation. Well, not speculation, but all the confirmed <laughs> transfers. <laughs> and go to the first match of tonight's footballing extravaganza here on first team. <laughs> it's going to be ACPOS. See them here at the barracks grounds. ACP, you know, is a, is a really, really good team. A uh, lot of good, experienced players. Trinkling with another uh, young players in between. But um, a really a good, some good professionals. Uh, the likes of Rodan Fabu back on them. And you can see um, why they're on top of the league by the cohesion that the, that the group has. It only took them 19 minutes. Rodan Fabu as you mentioned, 18th minute 
tall man, tallest man in any yeah. venue that he visits. And I mean, Shea Benny is one of the best uh, deliverer of a free kick. Yeah. Um, and, and there he's showing his wood again. And once you put the ball in the right areas, we're done for. We'll go and, and uh, fetch it, whether it be on his end or the offensive end. More from them. Yeah, and this Sadeel is McLean. McLean going through this time. And, uh, you know, Caledonia a little bit weakened because we talk about the uh, transfer window. They lost their uh, Mares at the back yeah. um, for them. You know, and Semper as well. And, yeah. and Semper, so two defenders, they're losing. And you can see there was a little bit of a disarray. The keeper came out. I didn't think he needed to at that point in time. But a really good finish by Sadel McLean um, for AC Porter Spade. And a good true pass again by uh, Shea Benny. What about the celebration? So they were looking <laughs> cool as a cucumber. <laughs> This man was cool in a very yeah. pressurized situation. Yeah. Coming across the box, and yeah. this was a goal for Caledonia. Joshua Alexander, 41st minute. I think Joshua made, I think Joshua actually crossed the ball in. No, he didn't actually. Uh, but this good play on the wing here, strong wing play, and you see Joshua sneaking in. Uh, he's the new captain since the boat captain's left arm yeah. <laughs> in the transfer window. So, um, you know, credit to Joshua. Uh, he, I think he's a really good young player also. Yeah. We, but he, uh, Potential. He's Cali from Bird because yeah. his uncle was a Cali man too. Yeah. Miguel yeah. Alexander. Yeah, yeah. St yeah. Uh, still on the cameras. Big up Miguel <laughs> Alexander. This is another goal there from ACPOS though on his cousin's team, Dwayne Mucket. And this, time, mm. and this time, and this time, yeah, yeah Mucket, uh, for a short guy, yeah. he seems to contribute a lot of headers, but his service is the key. And uh, when you have Benny serving from one side and Rashford, Serving from the from the next side, you know, it's always going to be um, good balls coming into the box. Two minutes later, market again involved. Little bouncy bounce here on the worst for wear police field, but that was the other goal for ACPOS Jamal Francois. Yeah, and, uh, and it's a good football from midfield, out wide, uh, big touch from Rashford, but nobody closed them down. And he played a really good true ball. One thing Jamal Francois has, he runs off the ball, touch. very intelligent yeah. player. And that's an outside the boot uh, finish. You'll watch him here. Uh, his right foot is his stronger foot. You can see he didn't want to go play <laughs> his, his left peg. But when he can finish like that in a bad angle with your, your wrong foot, then, you know, le le credit to the young man. Yeah. Very smart finish indeed. Ali is taking that. This is the 90 plus two. Francois, good work, and Che Benny. That is 5-1. Yeah, and there you see Francois again. You know, he's a very nippy guy. A good ball from Dwayne Market, one of the main protagonists from outer midfield. Good run from Francois. He holds his man off. Uh, good strength. He gets around him in the box. Defender probably didn't want to tackle because he probably thinks he might give a penalty away. And there he goes with the outside of the boot. Well, again. Passing <laughs> and and uh, good composure shown by Benny. And, and one thing she Benny has is good technique. But the whole move, uh, that was tough class football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, from midfield to the play on the flank and ball into Benny. Composure and finish. And, uh, you know... Credited them um, for the victory because they deserved it. 5-1, yeah. the final score. We spoke about some transfers before. Brandon Semper, Malik Mures is in this team. Do you think that has really made ACPOS into a much more imposing outfit going forward? Of course, and uh, defensively, because these two players are, are defensive players. And I think they were a little bit short. Uh, from defensive cover because I saw Primus was missing a couple of games. They had to bring a right wing back to play in there and they play um, Neptune as a centre back in one of the games. Uh, granted, they had a red card, but he had to play a centre back. So I think the AC Porter Spain would have showed up that position where he, they had cover now for Baka and um, Young Primus. So AC Porter Spain grab two players from Cali and then beat them in the <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> It's a little sort of It makes perfect sense. No, no. It's not so good. It's just facts, you know. Grab two players here. And two defenders. So you see, Caledonia was a little bit weakened there. Probably that is why they got so much goals in our game because two of the main, I don't think Mares was actually the captain of the side. So, you know, big loss for them. So, moving on. With this, uh, we're going back to the transfer window again, right? After AC Port of Spain acquired these people from Caledonia AIA, right? What, what do you think 
the impact with them other than what's happening in this game going forward? Cali mid table, you know, yeah. struggling a bit. Yeah. What will be the impact with these two players at AC Port of Spain for the next two games as they're looking forward to the, the CONCACAF qualification? I think Port and Semper. Yeah, yeah, I think Port of Spain, they're stronger now defensively because Semper can't play left wing back. He can't play on the left flank. Uh, Maris can play centre back. He can mm. also play at right back. So, f they, 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 the attack has always been potent with mm. the type of players that they have. Now, what they have done is seal up uh, that defensive cover because Primus and is going to start. Mm. Uh, but if they do get injured, now we have adequate cover coming in for them. And uh, with Marvin Phillips uh, mm. in the back there, in the goal. I mean, in the form that he's playing in. I yeah. think AC Porter Spin is a force to reckon with, not just in the local league, but when they do go uh, for the CONCACAF Champions League. So shop close going forward um, for, for AC Porter Spain. Just be talking about AC Porter Spain into CONCACAF, you think? I think I think it would be hard pressed for, mm. for anyone to, 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 to beat them, yeah. Right. Okay. All right, and with that, we will call the first segment of this first team episode to a break. We'll be back with more highlights. Stay with us. Back on first team, more highlights for you. This is a key match. Down in Mahaika, W Connection playing Tiger Tanks Club Sando. Connection in the white Sando in their royal blue kit. Good football mm. from them, and that is the opening goal. Alvin yep. Jones, eighth minute. What is he doing? There? I, 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 I <laughs> He's playing much higher up the park, but this is uh, you think? <laughs> meant for the captain. Put a really lovely ball. There was a hint of handball. Um, and then Alvin, you know, finished with his weaker leg. You can see the defender not attacking the ball. Alvin made the ball his, attacked it, and um, a good finish. You can see the appeals. Uh, a good ball in here from W Connection and a good save from Miles. A really good save because it was a good opportunity. W Connection was in the game, I have to say. Mm -hmm. Brian Williams are doing very good. There you go. Fighting. W Connection. And I think this is a chance for the squad, yes. And, yes, this uh, is Nathan Quashi. A Quashi name uh, yeah. in point 14. A good goal from yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and Quashi. Good save by Miles, but the second ball, they didn't deal with it. Club Sando. It came back in. Credit to W Connection. Keeping the ball alive. Chickenham can get rid of it. And Quashi, uh, he's, he's playing with QRC. And uh, I think mm. he captained them, I think, last year. So another young player uh, yeah. doing a lot of good still, things still in the league. in the school. Yeah. Very much a big boy in this game, leveling the scores. It would be one all at halftime. Connection holding the second place team in the league. But this one, <laughs> hey, on cork from Alvin Jones. Who won't give him it from there? Well, America knows that, yeah. don't they? <laughs> <laughs> um, there you go, uh, Alvin Jones special. And, and Denzel Smith is no slouch in the yeah. goal for W Connection. Goalkeeper. National goalkeeper himself. Yeah. But look at the bend and swerve and pace and direction on this everything ball. You know, right. uh, Alvin had everything, everything going. Uh, I think he have about six goals in the league uh, from uh, right already. back. You know, so uh, uh, it may be a good thing for the national team if we get goals from the back because, uh, you know, struggling to score up front. <laughs> Connection with the Lions. The national coach. Setting up the possession. <laughs> national coach in the market for a striker. <laughs> Anybody out there, you know, they have boots. Oh, my word. Yeah, yeah, but, but, um, good result there for Club Sandu. Yeah, but um, I just want to make mention W Connection. Young team, very, mm. very young team, and, and I think Brian, Brian and uh, Kerry is doing a, a, a tremendous job with the kids. They're seventh, and, that's, and look at the game, you know, they yeah. didn't lose badly from a club Sando team who has been flying. I think that was their sixth game in a row, victory in a row. So, um, really good stuff from W Connection, but also Club Sando, Cornell Glenn, Abdullah Phillips, Eddie Dean, all the people up there should be mm. really proud of the job that they're doing. So, when we look at this. Tiger Tanks, Club Sando team, they also did pretty well in the transfer market. Do you think that they can override ACPOS, which is the team that everybody's looking at to be on top of the league? I think um, it's, we have two leagues played in one. Yeah. We have the league that has two more matches for the Champions That's League, for the three teams to qualify. And then we have four more matches for the league championship. So there's still time because the, the point margin is just one point between the three top teams. So 
there's still time for, for, for one of the three teams to override each other um, to win the, the league, overall league. But the qualification of the CONCACAF is a different picture. Yeah. But yes, I do think that uh, Club Sando with the likes of, uh, we, we forget um, um, Francois, Ronaldo yeah. Francois, coming from Caledonia, mm -hmm. tremendous player. Isaiah uh, Thompson, uh, they have Jordan Riley, who they, they picked up from from um, W Connection, yeah, and uh, also I think Luke, Luke Phillip, that is a linchpin in the yeah, midfield. Point. He was doing fantastic things, yeah. uh, point for in Civic, and uh, Ezekiel Keza, another massive signing. So, busy, busy clubs and doing the transfer market. Yep. Yep. We're going to yep. run straight into the next highlight package, though Defense Force versus Prison Service, one of the favorites on this program. Or one of the people involved in this program. <laughs> Defense Force would be in full force. A man who is owing some more. This is Rion. Goal or so, 17th minute. Uh, and, and that's what Rion Moore could do, yeah. you know. Um, Rion Moore, uh, if, he, if he plays the game with the intensity, that he can play with the pace, the power, and he can finish with both feet, you know, as he demonstrates here, he's normally a right footer playing on the left side, but there he shows that he can blast it with the right. Uh, with the left foot from an, on the opposite side and a the fantastic strike. A lot of finesse and here is the gazelle sprinting in to claim this one. Easy goal. Gift rally from prisons and you can see Santa Claus is not happy. <laughs> <laughs> I think prisons are um, trying a little bit to over elaborate a little bit too much and credit we had more being alive yeah, like, and uh, really he put two on you know, the afterburners and, and got there before the goalkeeper and the centre back. 43rd minute. More steals. More. This is Rivaldo Coriat winning the penalty for Defence Force. Good play again, um, over play, and they give uh, Real Madrid the opportunity to get his hat trick, which he duly obliged Easily. and taking the match ball home. I do think they do that in Chile. Yeah. Do they have? <laughs> nah, yeah, yeah. As, as a manager, we pay that ball. Ball's too expensive, but we ain't going through that. How much for a ball? Here is the fourth goal of this match. And there's that man, Justin Sado. Mm -hmm. I think um, Jelani F Felix, overlapping run, good ball from Kayet, cross ball into the box, beat everyone. You can see it here, look the overlapping run from Felix. A good young player, Felix. Puts a good ball in, and uh, there you go, poor defending again. Mm -hmm. And Justin Sado, who has been having a mm -hmm. tremendous season um, in the midfield serious. for defense force. Come on, quite Four serious. Four nil at the end of the first <laughs> half. It would be twilight before prisons made a Mark in this game. They were trying and trying. I, I think Prisons has been decent. I think the, the players just haven't gotten up to speed yeah. uh, with the, the Pro League because they've been playing Super League. But it's a good ball, good effort. And I think they, they yeah, they pulled ones back. Um, prisoners because they play with pride, they play to the yeah, yeah. to the 90th minute, they, they never really give up. I think it's they 90 them, yeah. plus, they, they um, yeah, they do. And, and and there's good people at prisons, um, the, the organization there, yeah. which try to do nice things for the young men. 4 1, this match would end. The army keeping up the pressure on the top of the table with a mm. valuable win in this game against prisons. How do you feel about? Defense force. I know Rian Moy is one of your players, one of your personal favorites on the national yeah. team. How do you feel about the way that they're approaching this league? I mean, Hudson possibly Charles, make it into the Hudson top. Charles, um, and, and, and the rest of the coaching yeah. staff down there has been doing a fantastic job uh, with the guys. Defense force started off really slow, and they and that's yeah. now they, they build momentum, and now they in in um, third place, just one point behind mm. Club Sando, who has uh, 41 points. They have 40. And um, unlike other teams, Defence Force can't just bring in players yeah. and sign players they like have other to teams. With what they have. Although they have, what they have is very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, Avi has a, a, a barrage of, 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 mm. num, of good players. I think they have about 30-something players on staff. Yeah. So, you know, I think they'll be all right and for the running. And the, and the better players like Goddard and is now really building into yeah. his team. And Real Madrid starting to score goals again. Uh, which is a good sign. Sadu scoring from midfield. Um, Hashem Asse, good experienced players and stuff like that. So I think Defence Force is in a good place. All right, good signs for Defence Force. We're going to take a break, come back with the last match in focus this week. Standings, everything to follow. Stay with us. This is First Team. Fourth match, 
tonight. Tim next lock the Hokuto Rangers versus Central FC. Rangers needing to show what they're worth at home in front of a very sparse crowd, it has to be said, given the usual attendance they're accustomed to, but they went on about their business very well. This is the first goal scored by Isaiah Lee in the eighth minute. Lee has been playing Lee on the flanks. I, I, I love to see him playing in the number nine position. And he shows his worth here. Good first touch, good second touch, and look at how far finish. Yeah. Um, a really good young player. Uh, but he's, I think he's been playing out of position a lot. Um, nice to see him. Here he goes again. When he's in that center area there, he creates a lot. And, and he sets up Junior soon with a good pass. Not a good young player um, and, a, and a good finish. Yeah, Asun. former Shiva boys player yep, Junior yep, soon. Yep. You'd hear a lot from him in this match. Putting Rangers up 2-0. Seem to be very comfortable for them at this point. Yeah, I think Good Central goal. really didn't put up a, a, a fight at all in this match. I think it's surprising though to the football people. <laughs> a little bit of a fight though, Central <laughs> came back <laughs> to find their own goal. This was Ricardo John. Yeah. Not a man with some promise. Yeah, he's been he's been doing well for them. Uh, been scoring sporadically here and there. Um, no great level of consistency. Okay. Um, uh, he will need to do a little bit more um, consistent uh, goal scoring and play, you know, to really make a bigger impact. Before the half was done, this was as soon again, yeah. 45 plus three and how? Well, now that uh, I guess Real Gill is not there, as soon as take up yeah. that role on the left hand side, and uh, dated first touch again, real slack. Loose defending, yeah. yeah. I mean, no aggression really from Central FC, and uh, you see Rangers capitalizing on those mistakes. Rangers continuing to pile it on Adika Ash one time, 64th minute. Good work from uh, Atula Guerra, he really did yeah. well to hold up the ball. But again, look at this sequence you know, the ball is in the box. The defenders, you know, you're, you're not sure what they want to tackle, they don't want to tackle. Three men they, are on that too. Yeah, and, yeah, and nobody tackles, and, and the goal was somehow really difficult uh, for Ash. Good finish from Ash uh, from a very difficult angle. Rangers again getting past Central way too easily, and Tyrone Charles. Well, this was Junior soon, sorry, 67th yeah, yeah, minute. Yeah, that was his hat trick. Hat -trick. Yeah. As this hat trick goal, and again, you, you, you see the guys just here. Here's the sequence of play the ball goes down to the line, you run off his guy. There's three guys, four guys here, nobody really yeah. closing down, nobody making One an red, effort. Four yellow, yeah. yeah, and nobody in yellow made any kind of effort. Uh, Elton John and, and, and them will be very disappointed, uh, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, they'll be disappointed if they look back at this tape. That was a foul there, the penalty now. With Tyrone Charles, 84th minute. Yeah. Easy, yeah. into the roof. Yeah, I mean, um, Tyrone Charles, has, he's been very prolific. He's gone off the boil uh, a bit. He started off like a house on fire, and he's gone off the boil a bit. But um, there you see Tyrone Charles getting his gun. There's Nathaniel uh, Garcia. Again, you know, no tracking whatsoever uh, with the runners uh, from, from, from Central FC. Uh, guys running into the box and just having a freebie. Um, I think they'll be really, really disappointed. Yeah. The coach, uh, Boyce, I know him very well. Uh, he coached uh, um, St. Yeah, Benedict yeah. in the Colleges League. Um, and he'll look at this tape and he'll not be happy at all, at all. There was no tracking, no marking, um, no intensity at all from Central yeah. FC in this but match. And you can't win. No Rangers lost, uh, sorry, Central lose a whole lot of players to Rangers. You know, the, the, the sister team, we just call it here in football, <laughs> right? And uh, clearly that affected them, you know, but they, they dropped off two games before. And right now they're in a precarious position with regards to making the Champions League in the third spot, which is uh, the Champion Shield, which is a lesser tournament. You know, you have to qualify to go up. They, they, they could be, they could be uh, out of the running, if you watch the standings, you know, with two games to go before qualification. Yeah, um, Rangers, uh, they were in pole position. They had matches in hand. Uh, they had games that they, if they win, to, to go. Yeah, yeah, so I was just, not to wrap you up, but there is the results from this week. It's very important. We saw a couple of movements on the table as well. Just look at the 
match week 16 results. Defense Force, Terminex Rangers, ACPOS, and W Connect, and sorry, Club Sando winning. Police and Point Fort and Civic also winning in the matches that we haven't shown you today. Another result that you didn't see the rescheduled match for Rangers. They lost 5 2 to Police. How do you feel like these results have, have affected the league so far? I think, um, well, the, the police is, is you know, a, a lot of people is worried for police. Richard Hood, a uh, long standing coach, were, was replaced by Wendell Joseph. Mm. And um, the results have been very good. You yeah, know, since, um, since, Joseph. since Joseph, I think yeah. it's one loss, three yeah. wins, and a draw. So that's 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 very um, good. And you could see they brought in Joven Jones. Yeah. Um, so they signed Joven Jones. I think Callum Highland is signed for them, but he's not played as yet. Yeah. Uh, so. Clearly, there's, there seems to be an upward spiral with the, with police, and as a result of that, you know they, they played Rangers and demoralized them, demolished them as as you saw with a five uh, five two victory. That that have a big impact on the league right about now because as I was saying before, you know we're, we're just too too much days to go. You know Thursday is a big big day. You know uh, March day 17. It's Tuesday and, and on March the 18th it will be decided yeah. who going to who going to Conga Cup. Yeah. With that five deal, with that five two defeat um, inflicted on them by police, they out of the running, totally out of the running. All, well, all <laughs> army had to do is to keep it straight. Speaking about out of the running, let's look at the table. We have ACPOS on top, Club Sando second, Defense Force third, Rangers as we spoke about, fourth and now. Very far distance from them. Prisons, Sour Jabate <laughs> and Kunupia <laughs> make up the bottom three of the league. Let's look at match day 17 <laughs> fixtures. Thursday, 25th May, Atabold and Recreation Ground in Santa Cruz. Jabate, Hope's Connection. Prison Service hosts Police. Central FC hosts ACPOS in one of the big matches. The big We'd match. like to say thank you for watching First Team tonight on a very tight show. Don't mean to rush you, but from us, it's good night. We don't do good night. Nice boy. Nice boy. <laughs>